If you've often wondered what rocket scientists really do, then there's one place near Las Cruces you just have to visit. I'm Bud Russo. And I'm Cheryl Falstead, and we'll be your guides as we tour the Missile Park and Museum at White Sands Missile Range. Just inside the gate, you'll see the missiles pointing skyward. We'll tell you how to enter the White Sands base at the end of this podcast. They stand like sentinels to the not-so-distant past, a remnant of our history, a reminder of what we have invested to preserve our freedoms and our way of life. The Sentinels are more than 50 test rockets on display at the Missile Park and Museum at White Sands headquarters. They attest to the ingenuity and resourcefulness of the rocket scientists, engineers, and technicians who have worked at White Sands since its founding in 1945. For those who are intrigued by rockets and missiles, the Missile Park is like the proverbial candy store. These aerospace vehicles come in all shapes, although they're mostly long and narrow, and all sizes, from the 40-inch long dart to the 70-foot tall Redstone. They represent aerospace developments of the Army, Air Force, and Navy, as well as NASA and other government agencies. White Sands Missile Range was established during World War II as the country's largest overland military test range. Here, the Army launched captured German V-2 rockets and developed technologies that kept America's military ahead of the Soviet Union throughout the Cold War. Over the years, the engineers and technicians have launched more than 42,000 missiles and rockets, mostly for military development, but also for scientific exploration of the atmosphere and near space. Among the rockets on display is a completely restored V-2, housed in its own building. The cutaway rocket shows fuel tanks, intricate plumbing, and pumps that carried oxygen and alcohol to over 3,000 injectors at the top of the combustion chamber. On the walls around the rocket are pictures and text, providing interesting information about the V-2's development and operations. One highlight of the V-2 program occurred in 1949, we're told, when the Army launched a V-2 with a WAC Corporal second stage. Called the Bumper, it roared to an altitude of 62 miles, officially becoming the first rocket ever to reach outer space. Outdoors, in the Missile Park, there's a Redstone rocket, the sister to the one sent into outer space on a suborbital flight in May of 1961. The Redstone powered Alan Shepard, one of the original seven Mercury astronauts, in his Freedom 7 spacecraft to an altitude of 116 miles above the Earth. A decade later, Shepard commanded Apollo 14 and became not only the fifth man to walk on the moon, but the first man ever to play golf there. Some of the rockets in the missile park have names reminiscent of ancient legends and folklore. There's the Athena, a 50-foot-tall research missile used to simulate ICBM trajectories and reentry technologies. And there's the Loki, a 103-inch long rocket fired daily to carry weather instruments measuring atmospheric conditions over the range. Some rockets have bird names, like Falcon, an air-to-air guided missile fired from fighter interceptors, or Loon, America's version of Germany's V-1 buzz bomb that terrorized London during World War II. The Loon was never used during the war, but was used afterwards to test engine technologies. There's the Pershing, the 35-foot-long surface-to-surface missile sometimes credited with helping in the Cold War, and Honest John, another surface-to-surface missile designed as long-range artillery. You'll also find the Nike, America's first guided missile. If you're old enough, you'll recall how this missile had been deployed around cities back east as defense against bomber attacks. The rockets lay horizontally on their launch pads, where they could be raised and fired in a matter of minutes. Before Cold War missiles and rockets to the moon, however, White Sands had a long and often turbulent history. The western Tularosa Basin was home for centuries to native people who farmed the edges of the waterless basin and hunted from the San Andres to the Sacramento Mountains. From time to time, a White Sands Missile Range staffer has turned up grinding stones, pots, and other artifacts. Canyon walls are found inscribed with Mogollon rock art dating to the 13th century. In the 1800s, ranchers and Apache often clashed over who would possess the land. On May 14, 1880, Buffalo soldiers from the 9th Cavalry, based at Fort Selden, battled and defeated Victorio and his Mescalero warriors in the Himbrio Basin. After the Apaches had been forced off, ranchers worked hard to eke out a living on these desert lands. 
After decades of raising cattle, goats, and sheep, they too had to leave to make room for the missile range. The museum documents the history of the range from its earliest times to the present. There are interesting collections of native tools and pots, as well as the implements and artifacts of the ranching community. These ancient times, of course, live in the shadow of the missiles and rockets. There are drone control panels and a hand-wired circuit board that will awe anyone who has examined the size of one of today's integrated circuits. And there are also communications and photography equipment on display. Still in all, the highlight of a visit to the museum is the Missile Park, where vehicles named Little John, Matador, and Hound Dog point to our future while they tell of our past. The Museum and Missile Park is located at the White Sands Missile Range Headquarters, 22 miles east of Las Cruces on US-70 at the foot of the Oregon Mountains. The museum and gift shop are open daily 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's 0800 to 1600 for you military types, Monday through Friday, and 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday. It's closed on Sundays and federal holidays. Admission is free. For more information, call 575-678-8824 or check the web at www.wsmr-history.org. Because White Sands is a secured military base, use the parking lot to the right of and just before the gate. In the visitor center, you'll need to show your driver's license or picture ID to enter the base and walk the few hundred feet from the security checkpoint to the museum. To drive on to the base, you'll also need your auto registration and proof of insurance. Cameras are permitted, but you can only take pictures in the museum or the missile park. Some photographs used in this podcast are courtesy of the White Sands Missile Range Museum. This podcast was sponsored by the Las Cruces Convention and Visitors Bureau and produced by Explore New Mexico.